Once there were a people who were called the Greeks, and the Greeks had conquered all the known world, including Israel. And when they came in, they said, oh, what a beautiful temple, what a beautiful palace. It must be for the gods. And the Jews said, no, it's only for God. They said, no, it's for the gods. And the Jews said, no, it's for God. So anyway, for 200 years, and finally, they decided, these Jews, they have to learn to worship the gods of Greece. And so they gathered them all at the temple. And they said, it's time to bow down. And the first Jewish guy bowed down to the temple, to, to the idol inside of it. And the others, <laughs> it just made them shake. Because they knew if they bowed down to a false god, they would never be free again. That the God of heaven couldn't save them or wouldn't save them. And so they trembled in fear. And finally, Judah Maccabee. <sighs> and my uncle, they got up and said, no more! And they took out a sword and they whacked the Jew who had bowed down. And they whacked him good. He died right there on the spot. To teach other Jews, you're not supposed to be bowing down to idols. You know, I could show you a picture. Would you like to see that? Yeah. See, here's the temple. And see all the Jews wandering around very nicely. And all of a sudden, they weren't permitted to learn the Torah or circumcise the son. You know what they did? They got real smart. They created a game called dreidel. And it was a way of teaching the Torah to people. Now, if I add up all the letters together, it says, a miracle happened here. Yes, I know. Ask your mom and dad how that can be. Like this? Yes, just like this one. Are we going to play dreidel at mealtime today? Yep. Yep. You're going to win some chocolate? Oh, right. Okay. But, but then, then they started forcing the Jews to go in and see here, here are the Greeks and they're plundering everything. They're taking all the gold and all the good stuff out. They, they even took the menorah. They even took the menorah, that's right. You know? And then they put an idol in the temple. Well, that's when Judah Maccabee and my great uncle, Mordecai Maccabee, they got upset and they whacked the guy. And the Jewish guy, you know what? He died on the spot. And then they pushed the idol over. Next thing you know, the Jews and the Greeks are fighting. And Judah Maccabee, he ran off into the hills. And, and the other Jewish men came to him. And they created an army. And they were really just a bunch of farmers. And, and, and people who handled sheep and goats and some cattle. They weren't like the professional soldiers, not like Greece had, but they pulled together and they trained and they got ready and they buffed up. You know what I mean? They ate all the good foods. And then they decided no more Greeks. And they went down the hill and this was their very first battle and Judah Maccabee saw the Greek legions. He looks at him and goes, Who is like our God? And they all ran down there with their farming tools and took on an army. And lo and behold, who won? The Maccabees. The Jews did. And it was a great battle. Matter of fact, so few Jewish people died and so many Greeks died. They knew it was a miracle right on the spot. See, these are the Jews, the guys without the uniforms. And these are the Greeks, the guys with the uniform. Yes, but it took a lot of battles and a lot of time. But what's interesting is every time Judah would go into battle, he'll yell out, Who is like the old Lord among the gods? 
You know, it's just plural gods. You know why? Because the God of Israel is better than all the other gods of the world. And so you go, But when it was done, he would get together and go, Mika Moka, Mele Matunai, Mika Moka, Nedarba Kudush. And they would honor God because they knew it was not by their own strength, but by the hand of God. And you know what? They beat the Greeks down so bad. They lost so many men. They started saying things like, Who wants this scruffy land anyway? is full of scorpions and snakes. The Greeks got so tired of losing, they packed up everything and they left the land going, it left a mess in the temple. They went to the temple and, oh, jeez. It was such a mess. You know, the temple, let me show you some pictures. The, sh the temple had trash in it and left old parts of of animals that are not kosher. They were offering to their false gods. And they had weeds and dirt and grime in it. And so when the people saw the temple, <laughs> they began to weep. A whole group of people called the Smithsteins got brooms. And the Smithsteins started to clean. And then the whole group called the Deanburgers the Deanburgers went and got some, some polish and, and some fresh rags and started cleaning up all the gold stuff. And then, I thought, what a wondrous thing. The Ruinburgers, they said, we need to find some oil. Bryce Ben Avram, he found one good case. The problem was the oil was only supposed to last one day. And so they began to pray, Oh God, if we have found favor with you, and if you have received our offerings, may this oil that is meant for one day last eight days. And with great boldness, they would light the holy menorah. And it burned how many days? But eight days, the oil burned. And everyone shouted, Alleluia! Baruch Hashem! Bless God. And you know what? They knew God was with them because they had had a miracle. They had a miracle. Now, why is this important? Because there's a holy light that's supposed to burn in our hearts. For when Messiah comes, when Messiah comes, he must find Jews who are waiting. Because when he finds the Jews who have been lights into the world, he will know that the bride of Messiah, the people from the nations, are also waiting. So why is Hanukkah important to us? It's important because as long as there's a Hanukkah, we can wait for the Mashiach to come.